Hello there, it's Stephen Ball here and I'm going to be looking at how we can filter uh, T data sets whilst we're using live bindings thanks to uh, what we looked at in our previous video around master detail relationships with live bindings. So I'm not going to recap on the previous video but I am just going to jump onto the form here and as if by magic um, I've just created a, a data set here using a FIDAC mem table. Uh, I've got a, a TDB grid which I've got connected up using a, a data source and I've got a couple of fields in here just name and colour. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the master here to then filter the data in the data set. So three things we need to do. Firstly populate the data set uh, and then we'll have a look at the other couple of bits underneath the hood as, uh, as we build it up. So let's get underneath the hood, so to speak. Um, now, one of the things that we do need to do is we just need to add an additional item to the array here. And I'm going to just jump to my notes to save me having to type this out live. I'm literally just going to add in here an additional element. So this is going to be an object link. And we're just saying we've got the tfoo, which is our master object, and the detail here is going to be a data set. And we don't really need to do much with this here. We're just using this as a, a spoof entry, really. Um, all we're going to do is we're going to say, right, with the, with the data set, we want to, if, uh, if it's not assigned, then just exit out. Uh, and this can happen uh, before the form's created completely. Um, and we're going to say here if we have a if we have a current master, if we have a fill object, then oh sorry, if we don't, then return nil, make the grid invisible. Uh, if we do, then return the mem table, and we're just going to filter so the name is the current foo object name. That's all we can do, and then just make sure the data set's filtered and the grid is visible. Um, that's really the only bit of code that we're using here. Um, we don't really need to actually return this here at all. But um, Okay, so that's that's what we're going to do to filter. Um, all we need to do now is just add in the code for creating the data. So I've got a little bit of code here, which I'm just going to go and copy. And I'm just going to put that down here once the form's been created we know then the data set has been created after the inherited create's been called and I've just got a, a little function here which is just going to do the add to data set which I can just go and declare in line up here okay so here we're just switching a pending uh, a name and a color into the data set so we've got Bob Frank and George and here we just got some different values for Bob, Frank and George uh, being added in. So let's go ahead and run our project. And now we can see Bob and we've got the Bob's data. If we move to Frank, we can see we're getting Frank's and George, we're getting George's data. So very, very simple. Um, we have a data set that's initially here. This could be a set of objects you return back from a SOAP call, hooking up to local data that you stored around. Um, but uh, yeah, very, very possible to go ahead and do whatever you want to do here. Um, additionally, what you could do in here is you could actually have code that checks to see if the data has been fetched, and if not, go and fetch that data and then load it in. So you can actually do master detail with some you know, more complicated work underneath here. Uh, it doesn't need to be physically part of the object all the time. Um, but this really opens up the, uh, the door to working different ways with master detail and fetching on demand as you need to. Okay.